Welcome everyone. My name is Melanie Brooks and I am the audience coordinator at the Bangor Daily News. Tonight I am joined by BDN reporter Isha Pendarker and our special guests Angela Okafor, Pius Ali, and Sophia Khalid. I want to begin by thanking our event partner, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Bill Barassa, director of main sales at Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, is here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words at Harvard Pilgrim. We're, we're happy to be a contributing sponsor uh, to these events. Not only does it great, uh, bring great content to your readers, to the general public, it also allows us to be together as humans, right? Uh, during this period of, of social distancing, this is a great opportunity for us to see faces, uh, many of whom we've never met before, so it's wonderful. Uh, at Harvard Pilgrim, we've um, spent a great deal of time during COVID-19 uh, taking care of our members, our clients, and our community. Uh, for members and clients, we have uh, eliminated a lot of barriers to COVID testing as far as co-pays, co-insurances, deductibles, and so forth, and allowing that access to care. Uh, to our communities, our foundation has given close to 1.7 million uh, to nonprofits throughout the state uh, to help with relief. And most recently, we've given close to 700,000 to three main community health centers, one of them being uh, Penobscot Community Health Care uh, in Bangor. So again, thank you for allowing me to be here and to say hello, and I'm looking forward to a great conversation today. Wonderful, thank you, Bill. Your support is um, really appreciated and we're happy you're here with us tonight. And thank you to those joining us who are BDN subscribers. If you're joining us for the first time, we are happy that you're here and we hope you join us again in the future for another event. I'd like to take a minute to introduce my co-host, Isha Pendarker. Isha is an education and general assignment reporter. Isha has also focused her coverage on immigration, international students, and telling the stories about minorities in Maine. An immigrant herself, Isha has a unique perspective on these stories that most people in Maine newsrooms don't. Isha worked as a chemical engineer before earning her master's in journalism from Boston University. And Isha will be asking our guests some questions, but we want to hear from you too. If you have a question for any of our speakers, please use the chat function at the bottom of your screen to type in a question or comment and I will share them on your behalf. So before Isha begins asking her questions, I'm going to take a moment to introduce our special guests. Angela Okafor is a Nigerian born immigrant and attorney. Months after becoming an American citizen, Angela became the first immigrant and first person of color to serve on the Bangor City Council. Angela owns a law practice, an international market, and a hair care business. She is the recipient of the Trailblazer Award from Empower the Immigrant Woman. Thank you, Angela, for joining us tonight from Bangor. Pius Ali, a native of Ghana, is the first American, I'm sorry, Pius Ali, a native of Ghana, is the first African-born Muslim American to be elected to a public office in Maine becoming a member of the city's elected Board of Public Education in 2013. He was elected to the Portland City Council in 2016. Pius is a youth and community engagement specialist at the University of Southern Maine's Muskie School of Public Service, Portland Empowered, and has spent the better part of his career focused on community engagement. So welcome, Pius. Last but not least, Sophia Khalid is a community organizer who focuses on youth development and engagement in the community. She is the first in her family to receive a high school diploma and to attend college. A graduate of the University of Southern Maine, Sophia is also the first Somali American to serve on the Lewiston City Council. Thank you all three of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us tonight. I really appreciate it. And I am going to hand it off to Isha who will kick off our questions. Uh, so I have a few questions for um all three of you, all three of our guests today, and um, whoever, you know, wants to answer um, can jump in. It's not directed towards any specific person. It's just questions overall for all of you. So first of all, can you start by telling me um, what inspired each of you to run for public office? Okay. Um, I, uh, I have lived in Bangor with my husband and our three kids that we have here. Uh, for about 13 years now. Um, but you know, over time, 
I think I'm echoing. Is it clear with you? Is it clear? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so over time, we experienced several situations that um, I kind of feel, in all fairness, maybe um, people were not very um, enlightened in aspects of race and diversity, and um, especially in, and in perspectives. So that encouraged me, having uh, also recently experienced a, a very close friend go through um, situations like that, you know, it got me thinking, okay, she's done all these things, and um, so what next? You know, who on that board that she, uh, she reached out to was, was going to really understand where she's coming from? Or are they going to just cast away her, um, her concerns as just one of those, um, you know, issues to be just tossed in the trash? So that got me thinking, like, okay, how come there's never been uh, a person or a diverse person in the city of Bangor in a political office to at least bring a different perspective? So that got me into um, running for Bangor City Council. I'm thankfully winning. Mm. Great. Yeah, you were running in a race which had uh, the most number of candidates in about 50 years, right? Yeah, so I had. Yeah. Yay, Angela. <laughs> That's so great. Hi, Mary. Hi. I miss you. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining. It's nice to see you today. Um, hi, everyone. This is Sophia from Lewiston. So what inspired me to run for city council in my city is... Um, you know, because of the lack of representation. And the other thing is that I grew up, you know, with a, with a single mom who did not speak English, who did not know the system in America, who did not have a car. And we really struggled um, when we, you know, arrived in America, in New Jersey. And then also um, we, we just couldn't adjust to the environment. We had no one that we can lean on and talk to. Um, and then moving to Lewiston, we, you know, found safety and a sense of comfort, but it's still, um, she would travel, like walk for miles just to shop for grocery. And, um, you know, just watching her go through all of that, because she imagined a life that she really never imagined for herself, um, really gave me hope to be involved in my community and to really step up and to be, you know, uh, not, not only to be the first to graduate from high school or even college, but also to run for office so that not only sh should I help my, you know, people like myself or people with similar background and a similar experience as like me, but also the wider Lewiston community because um, just watching people struggle with everyday life experiences was really hard. Um, so yeah, that's what inspired me. Great. Thank you. Um, so my name is Pius Ali, as uh, has been stated earlier. Uh, my inspiration came in a different way. Uh, since I moved to Maine, when I first came to the U.S., I lived in New York for two years, and then I moved to Maine. And uh, when I came to Maine, most of the work that I've had is either working with young people who are incarcerated or who are homeless, or uh, working in Portland's uh, housing neighborhoods, namely uh, Riverton, Kennedy Park, uh, Sagamore Village, Front Street. And uh, so I was out there in the community. And uh, one day, uh, one of my colleagues at work actually said to me, um, hey, uh, do you want to run for school board? And she said, there are two seats open and there are about seven people or eight people running for the seat. And we think that uh, you will bring different perspective. And I said to her that I'm not interested uh, in running for school board. And she said, why can't you find someone? So I went out and looked for people who will run. And if I say to someone, do you want to run for school board, both in the immigrant and the, a larger community, they look at me as if I have two heads. Like, are you out of your mind? No, you're not interested. So eventually, this woman uh, uh, pushed me, uh, kept saying that you can do this. And then I went to City Hall and collected, uh, collected the forms and went out and collected signatures. All the while, 
I was reluctantly doing this. However, when I started campaigning for my school board seat, unprepared uh, for a campaign, uh, I saw what my candidacy could bring to a community and then to the group of young people who I was working with, whether it is young people that I met at uh, uh, Seas of Peace or young people that uh, went through a youth leadership program called Kin Fellows that I, I created, co-founded with uh, uh, State Representative Rachel Talbot Ross and many other young people that I have had relationship with, they will come to Portland in large numbers. And uh, at a point I was afraid that my campaign was going to make me lose the election because I will go to neighborhood with high school students running all over that I don't have no control how to get them to toe the line and knock on doors. But we were able to make it, there were two seats uh, available with uh, I think six people uh, and myself and someone got elected. That campaign and the way the people of Portland reacted to me, anytime I knock on someone's uh, door, people who were paying attention on my work in the community will say to me, we really appreciate everything that you're doing in this community. And we also like the fact that uh, I'm gonna borrow my sister Sophia's words, that you step up to the plate uh, uh, to run for office because uh, the young people that you work with, the families that we work with, need someone who understand who they are to be there. Whilst on the school board, I think I realized that uh, the issues that I have interest in that people called me to ask me, how can we do this or how do we do this is beyond city hall. So when the opportunity, beyond school board. So when the opportunity came for me to run for city council, uh, I did run for city council. That was in 2016. And again, there were three of us and I got elected. So thank you, Portland. Thank you for that answer. Um, all of you, I mean, your, all of your stories of, you know, campaigning and victories eventually, I think, have brought um, some much needed diversity to administrative leadership in these, the biggest main city, the three biggest main cities. So uh, thank you for everything that you do. Um, another question I had for all of you again is um, if you can talk about some you know, challenges you faced as an immigrant, run, like both campaigning and now that you're in office. And in contrast to that, some of the successes that kind of, you know, validated your decision to run in the first place. So I, I personally in my campaign have experienced a lot of challenges, but those challenges um, made who I am, made me stronger for it. Um, while, while I was running, People, you know, attacked me and, um, you know, because of my religion, but, but it wasn't, you know, there weren't people who really mattered to me. There were people from across the country, but my, my community, the city of Lewiston really stepped forward and I've knocked over 200, you know, 2000 doors and since March till since November and every single door that I've talk to or every single person that I've communicated and I've met, they were amazing. Um, you know, more than two decades ago when, when, when we moved here um, to Lewiston, that really assured me that this is my home. I've met people that I never met before, people that were complete strangers, but when I went to their door and I talked to them, they were just full of love and joy when they saw me and I and after you know telling them I was running for office they even welcomed me into their homes and sat me down and we had long hours of conversation so that really reassured me that Lewiston is a place full of hope and opportunity and great people that continue to open their arms and continue to welcome people regardless of uh, your nationality and your you know demographic um, regardless if, you know, I've, even though I had a lot of Facebook attacks or people said things about me because of, mainly because of my religion and who I am, um, I really did not focus on the negativity. I focused on the positivity that was really happening when I was having real conversations with real people. Um, so, so yeah, that was really the main thing that the city of Lewiston really stepped forward that Tuesday night and voted for me um, and chose, you know, to continue to say, this is your home and thank you for stepping up and making a difference in our community. And that's, yeah, they were definitely the ones that gave me hope basically and confidence to get up every day and to continue to knock more doors. 
so for me, of course, I experienced several uh, challenges. Uh, one of them being, of course, having been a mother to very little kids. And um, it was, um, it was very challenging, you know, having to manage three uh, very young kids uh, with my businesses and um, also running a campaign, <laughs> uh, like you said, against 15 other people. And in an area where there has never, there had never been a, a person of color at all before. So yes, a lot of people, I had to, uh, I had to um, kind of re revalidate myself so many times, um, which kind of got me to really realize that, you know, when we talk about um, issues of maybe not, Bengal not being welcoming or anything like that, I think it's mostly about a lot of people who live here haven't left here. A lot of people have never left Bengal. You know, all they know is Bengal, Brewer, maybe Hammond and all that, or maybe Portland. And having not just left here, but have not had the opportunity to really interact with it, several other people away from Bengal. I think that is most of the problem a lot of people have here because I run into situations whereby, you know, people weren't sure like, oh, you come from Africa, you know, and then we have to, I have to explain, oh, Africa is not a country, it's a continent. You know, I come from Nigeria, which is a country in the continent of Africa. So it's, it's a lot of, that happened a lot of times, I see fire smiling. <laughs> So that happened a lot of times and you know there were times people will ask oh did you go to school to study english so how come you speak english you know how is it back at home do you guys have like libraries and stuff like that and you know there, there were several times that by the time we finish talking we don't even talk with sometimes i end up not even talking about why i'm running it's all about you know where you come from why you chose here how long you've been here what brought you here and stuff like that before you know it, you know, people are already kind of very more welcoming and more understanding and kind of, oh, don't go to that place. Oh, that place, they have a dog because I'm very scared of dogs. Oh, that place, they have a very, you know. So it, it was, it was, um, it kind of taught me a lot um, despite the challenges. Then another struggle I had, of course, I don't think this will be news to anybody, is of course being a person of color, a black person in a regular america so uh just like you know the way things are seen today black person most like most times is seen as a threat so i had uh, like a neighborhood i came into i had a lady uh a, a, who is married to a black man who knows me so she had to because i had a car following me usually i go with my hands out and uh you know i, I didn't go with my purse i used i would always leave my purse in my car just have my phone and my uh, palm card with my picture, keeping it close to my face. So this car kept following me up and down. I just ignored it. So this lady, I ran into her and she was like, oh, you're campaigning. And I, I think she noticed what was going on. So she told me, you know, well, just calm down that she went to um, their neighborhood social Facebook um, page and posted that I was in the neighborhood campaigning, that I was safe that I wasn't a danger, you know? So it was, it was, I ran into people a lot that, you know, were kind of, um, I felt looked at me suspicious. I knocked on a door, for example, and usually I knock on a door, I move back, you know, away from the door. And I kind of try to keep my hands where you can see it. Not very calm, but you know, kind of being conscious of the fact that I wanted people to see that my hands were free, except holding my palm card, close to my face so you can see that you know um and i remember being shushed away you know <laughs> until um i i moved back further and you know i kind of pointed at my flashed my card and pointed and you know kind of signal and the lady saw me and was like oh, oh okay you're running for office you know then she came down and we started talking she actually invited me into her home which was interesting from shushing me to invite me into her sitting room. So it was, it was a lot of um, challenges like that. And um, 
But one thing I think I, I, that validates my, my running, I think kind of gives me um, confidence that, you know, I did the right, I took the right decision is currently now, uh, my, I run on, of course, new perspective, diversity, which immediately I got on, and of course, transportation, which thankfully we've taken a, a, a first huge step on in my city. But at least even before the George Floyd situation and everything, we have been taught, we have started in the city of Bengal having several conversations around um, diversity. You know, for the first time in the history of Bengal High School, there was a diversity forum. And I mean, it doesn't always come very easy, but I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, all these things have been happening even before this, um, this whole chaos going on right now. So that um, makes me feel good that, you know, uh, my decision was the right one at the right time. I think uh, uh, a lot have been said that I can relate to in my uh, own personal experience as a candidate or as an elected person. Uh, campaigning have not been easy, even though uh, both my school board and my city council uh, campaigning was excitement. I, I, I did a lot of things that made my campaigning excitement. I would take pictures of a neighborhood and post on social media and say, if you name this street, I give you a button. I have this fancy Pius Ali for city council button. But even with that, uh, with the media attention that came with my city council race, still there are some homes that I go to where I'm a Muslim too, and I'm also a black person. That the people will say to me, go away, we don't want to support you. Uh, uh, but I didn't take that personally. What that did was uh, give me more uh, um, um, energy and more encouragement for me to run the more. The city council race uh, was not so much as bad as the school board one. Uh, because I've learned so much. Um, there is something that um, um, I think when you go into a neighborhood that uh, you don't know people or people don't know you, um, as uh, Angela said, there's all that looking suspicious, looking of what is he doing here. Because even in Portland, there are neighborhoods that uh, black people don't normally just get up and say, I'm going for a walk because that is not where they live. So when they see you, and I am a very avid canvasser. I love to canvas. Um, I can leave home in the morning and come back at night. Um, so you, they will see me walking around. I've parked my car like a mile away and I've been walking and people will just be looking into their window. And uh, <clears throat> I do something strategically. Uh, uh, the people that I've seen look at me suspicious are the ones that I actually want to talk to. So I will come to you. Um, in 2016, uh, when I was running, Trump was a candidate. My volunteers would not go to households who have a, a, which have a, 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 a Trump sign. And I will intentionally go, I will say, don't go, go to other houses, but I will go to that house. And I will talk to the people in that house. And uh, uh, it wasn't easy, it was challenging. I had so many things that I don't wanna hear. But for me, uh, since if I got elected, um, I, was, I am an at-large city councilor. I will be serving everyone who lives in the city. So I might as well talk to them as a candidate so that I will get to know them, even though it was difficult but I was able to do it. And the result of the election uh, in that year showed it that uh, it paid off, but we don't get it easy. You have to do twice more. You have to work twice or three times more. You have to face uh, all sorts of challenges when you are at the door. The Portland Public Schools current school board chair, he replaced me on the school board. Um, so we are friends, me and him canvas together. There was a neighborhood, which is not far from where he lives. Literally, it's about five minutes walk from his house. Uh, we went there, a whole range of houses slammed their doors at both me and him. Um, uh, and that was like the third day and he looked at me and he said, oh my goodness, is that how it is like? But I said, no, this is the difficult part. We will go to the fun one, they will give us chocolate. So, um, uh, and that is what happened. Different parts of town react differently and different parts of town you have to face uh, situations like that. But we keep going, so. Great. Well, thank you so much for, you know, kind of sharing your experiences. I'm sure um, it must be eye opening for a lot of people who don't realize what you had to, you know, just you, you had to go through just knocking on doors, trying to work for the people that you're, you know, going to represent. So and thank you for sharing that. 
Um, so I have one last question. Um, and again, it's directed at all three of you. Uh, in the past few weeks, there have been, especially in the news, we've seen, um, you know, proof that minors of color of all ages have faced racism at, in their schools, in their communities, um, you know, in the criminal justice system. There are so many examples that have recently come out. Um, so how do you think city and school leaders can help? Like how, how do you think, um, can you play a larger role because you have lived experiences as people of color? And what do you think kind of city leaders or school leaders should be doing to make sure that Maine is a more welcoming place regardless of who you are and where you come from? We can, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we can start by looking at policies. Um, you know, how can we, because I believe uh, most of the policies, like let me say, for example, Bangor, um, this is the first time we are having um, people of color in elected office. That, that doesn't mean that, you know, there haven't been white people who have thought about black people before now or other people that are not just white. But um, maybe let me use this analogy. For example, I buy a shoe or I make my dress, you know, I measure myself and make a dress and um, I put it on, it fits me very well. You put it on, it may fit you very well, but not as perfect as it fits on me. Does that make sense? So in this case, no matter how much of an ally someone is, um, you will never really understand what it truly means to be that person. So being that person gives you that, um, that unique insight, not an overall insight, but um, a unique um, knowledge of how things will affect you and people like you in certain situations, which is what is important to consider in situations of making policies and making laws or ordinances, whatever they are, then um, I would go back again to my, my Bangor. Um, in Bangor, recently there have been a huge influx of people of color, mostly being recruited by the University and the Northern Light um, Medical Center. That being said, you know, for example, I talked about myself previously having some issues with my kid in school. When, when we first had those issues, I, I think probably the school, they hadn't had issues like that previously, at least not a lot, to have been more knowledgeable on how to handle my situation. But having now, having dealt with my situation, I believe it has enlightened them more than they were before me. And, but then I was maybe one in 10 or one in 20 or one in 50 black people. But now you may be seeing one in 10, you know, which means that there are more people. That being said, it means that things need to change to accommodate these um, changes and to equip teachers and school administrators um, to know better how to handle situations and uh, to learn and understand the differences in culture and, um, you know, um, values, because these are all the things that come together to, um, to make who people are. So yes, and however, this is, not, um, this is not a duty just for the elected officials. I believe every human being in every community, we need to look inwards in ourselves. We all have several biases. It could be economic bias, but it's a bias. You know, we have to first of all admit that we have issues. We have things. I'm a black woman, um, but I'm an immigrant. There are a lot of issues that uh, black uh, African Americans that are, um, have their history rooted in slavery know that I do not know. So I am still learning despite being a black woman, you know. So I think uh, everybody in our community for this change to really, really, truly happen and be an elastic one, we all need to look inwards and find out what is it that we are biased in. It doesn't make us bad people, but it just makes us aware and willing to change. Um, I think until we are able to really look in, inside and um, address our biases, or at least be conscious of it and try to work 
towards making it better and then changing some policies and um, trying to uh, also make uh, 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 the staff more diverse. I think that will be a collective effort that will uh, move our communities um, to a better place, especially in light of the diverse population that we are having and the aged uh, population, which is affecting our economy as a community. Thank you. I think first and foremost, I think I saw uh, another elected official from Portland. I don't know if she's still here. Mickey, if you are here, thank you for joining us. I saw you once. I don't know if you've uh, turned off your camera and you are listening. If you are, thank you for joining us. So I always do this uh, anytime I have the opportunity to speak, especially if the issue of race in America comes into the conversation. I want to thank uh, uh, the uh, African Americans and Native Americans and other uh, Americans of color who paved the way for people like me to be in this country and do what I'm doing. I always almost uh, want to say that if this conversation comes up and I have to speak to it, because if not for them, the sacrifices and the struggles that they went through, I will not be here. So I'm grateful for that and I stand on their shoulders. Portland, uh, for example, is not the rodeo of uh, having black people in office. I am not the first, uh, even amongst immigrants, I'm not the first immigrant to run. I just happen to be the first uh, immigrant to be lucky and be elected. And since then we have other uh, immigrants, um, um, African immigrants specifically uh, being elected in office in Portland. Um, the issue of uh, racism and how it affects all of us, um, um, as a city, as a country, and as, uh, uh, I, I think globally, I think we need to look inward, as uh, my friend, sister, uh, Councillor Okafo said, uh, to look at what is, it, what is it that we are doing right and what is it that we are doing wrong. This thing has been going on for generations, and uh, uh, now, if my 15 year old daughter is all uh, 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 wired up and look, um, 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 uh, ready to fight and make a change, I think it's about, about time that uh, adults in the room, especially those who have power, whether it is elected power or financial power, to intentionally make decisions that they know that um, 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 will be fair to all, uh, and also those of us who are policy makers, when we are going to pass policies or we are going to, uh, to pass budgets, let's intentionally look and see what is the racial equity impact of our laws, of our finances. How do we hire people to represent the cities that we, we, we represent? Even right now, if we have a city that is, uh, let's say minority, majority city, to that city, if it is in Maine, I will say to them that make sure that whoever you hire reflect the people who live in that city. Because the issue of racism uh, didn't start last night. Uh, it took us almost 200 to 300 years to get here. We are not going to solve it um, uh, overnight. And as uh, black uh, and other um, uh, minority, racial minority individuals will not be able to solve it by ourselves. So um, I think all of us should work together and uh, it is not going to be easy. It is not going to be, it's not a walk uh, in the park, uh, but uh, we should be able to do it. And I believe that uh, we will, because it's the right thing to do. Um, well, I'm gonna, I definitely agree with, you know, with Angela <clears throat> and Pius, but one thing that I'm gonna add is that since becoming a city councilor and an elected official, and also being the, you know, the only black person on the council and also in a lot of spaces, what I have seen is that I'm always talking about my lived experience and my background as a black person, um, as, as a woman, as a Muslim, like I carry a lot of identities and at times I feel like I'm always speaking up for them. And, you know, I, I cannot speak up for all these identities I carry, I can only, the only thing we share is, you know, struggle um, to, to some extent. So that being said, you know, for our white allies and um, my white colleagues, all I'm gonna say is that I think we need to listen. Um, you know, white people can never understand the struggles black people go through, but the, on the only thing we can do is honestly listen and be open-minded and listen to the stories um, of everyday life experiences of black people because that 
will change policies, that will change laws and systematic oppression. Um, because a lot of the time, white privilege is, you know, very much alive. And, um, and, and if you live under a system that continues to benefit you, you will really never know what it is to be like oppressed. So therefore, then we need to take a step back and hear other people who are oppressed and hear their stories and how they, you know, what they experience in the healthcare system, what they have experienced in the school system, what they have experienced in local government, right? Um, and then we can, after that, come together and really figure out true policy change and, um, and, and yeah. Thank you all so much for those wonderful answers. Can you all hear me better now? I switched yeah. computers. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I had a, another question. Um, Isha had to pop off for a moment, so I'm going to take over. Um, we would like to know, what do you consider to be your biggest successes while serving in office? Personally, for me, I am, I just want to say that I am just really privileged to be at the council table, like that I bring so much, even though we didn't, I personally did not make big policy changes, but just my presence there and me having a different perspective and um, bringing a different um, tone of voice is, it's definitely an honor. Um, not only for me, but for the black community and for the wider community in my city. So I just, honestly, just my presence itself is a big step. Um, like Safia said, my presence there, I think it has brought a lot of consciousness. And um, in, I believe the whole of our city, you know, um, as to how we, we do things as to the fact that um, Bangor Maine is not the only place in existence and the way things are done here, not that it's not okay, but you know, to realize that, okay, if we need people to come and help us boost our economy, we need to understand also that they have a way of doing things of which if we understand, it will help you know, both sides. Um, do better. And of course, it adds to um, several policies and laws, you know, because now I'm sure most of them understand, oh, okay. Um, I told them, you know, I would rather you ask me questions or I'd rather I ask. So even when I ask stupid questions, quote unquote, uh, I would rather ask you to make sure that I am not misunderstanding something than to be assuming. So I think just that presence and the consciousness my presence has brought, I think that means a lot. Uh, thank you. So there is something that I say to people, to both of you, uh, the importance of you being at that table is beyond uh, your towns and beyond uh, our state. Uh, there is an organization called New American Leaders is a nationwide organization that brings together first and second generation uh, Americans who are elected into office. And in the context of that organization, first generation is like uh, myself, uh, Angela, Sophia, and Mickey, who is here, Abusana Mickey, who is here, she's on the school board in Portland. They call all of us first generation and our kids are second generation. The first time I went to their convening, um, I think either I was on the school board or something, I went by myself. And there's nobody from Maine, and everybody was feeling bad for me that you're coming from Maine. And the second time I went by myself, the third time that I was going, I went with like eight people. And then they said, what the heck are you guys doing up there? You've been coming here, we're all feeling pity for you. And now just suddenly you've come in with, uh, uh, with so many people. Uh, there is a conversation or something that I normally say when people ask me what is the importance of having us uh, uh, or having me in an elected office. What I say is that uh, previously when I was not elected, the analogy is that I would knock at the door and say, hey, uh, can you please let me in? Can you listen to me? I have challenges, I have issues. Our community need to talk to you. And the people who are the other side of the door, they can choose to open the door or draw the curtain and say to us, come back tomorrow. By now that we are elected, 
we don't need to knock at the door. We will walk into the door and we will bring our community with us. So that alone uh, uh, is very important for me. That alone is meaningful, uh, uh, both uh, symbolically and in actuality, because our presence in city chambers uh, bring in our communities, whether it is for events or just to come and testify uh, at issues. Our running for office increases uh, um, our communities uh, engaging the system um, uh, uh, civically and uh, electro, um, um, how do you call that? Electionarily. Uh, so those are more for me, more meaningful. Uh, uh, um, and it's part of the wider uh, meaning of uh, our participation and being elected in office. Wonderful. Thank you. Before I ask another question, is there anyone in the audience that has a question or a comment that they'd like to share? I'm going to, um, you can raise your hand or you can wave. Um, I'm going to allow everyone to be able to unmute themselves. I'm just going to go through real quick. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw a question, sorry, from Richard Burns. I don't know if I pronounced it right. Does the extreme political issues now present in the national news and on Twitter affect the working relationships among you and your fellow counselors? Oh, please, it's a good question from Richard. Would you like to answer? Oh, definitely, sure. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah, thank you, Richard, again. <laughs> I didn't um, see it, I didn't scroll down far enough. My apologies. So, um, yes, it does affect but then it depends on how you look at it. Um, I believe it has made all of us uncomfortable in certain ways. But then uncomfortable is, um, it's good, you know, uh, because I think it brings with it some awareness. Um, for between me and my colleagues, I will speak for myself. I don't read minds, but I think it has kind of strengthened a little bit um, I believe most of our relationships, um, but I'm, I'm, I like to, I like to speak my mind, even though sometimes I, I feel like maybe I come a little too hard or something. Um, and sometimes I feel like my tone is kind of, you know, uh, maybe comes off like a little harsh or something. Um, but I, I am the type that, and my community and my colleagues and our city staff have been very welcoming of me. I have an issue, I reach out and we talk about it. Um, and I have respected so many times to not come on social media to talk about issues. I, I reach out and you know we talk about it and uh, we push it forward when, need, when it needs to be. Um, but um, I think, the national issues haven't really, I think it has worked um, a lot of positivities into uh, my relationship with my colleagues. I would say not a hundred percent, you know, beautiful, beautiful, you know, but I think it has brought a lot of awareness and it has kind of um, strengthened our, our work relationship, I would say, and um, enlightened more of uh, us on how we can make better and um, more lasting impact in our community. And I am proud to say that, um, for example, during the rally, you know, every single counselor showed up. You know, that is, that was, for me, it meant a lot. Um, I mean, they could have chosen not to come, you know, but to say, okay, you are our colleague and we stand with you um, in this tough time. That means a lot, and that should that tells a lot as to you know what our, my community at least has um, chosen to make up of this national um, and Twitter situation. Thank you, um, Sophia Pius. Do you have any answer to that question from Richard? Um. So yeah, basically what what Angela said, but um, you know since the killing, the murder of George Floyd. Um, not only you know elected officials but the just general community members have this desire for change you know um, for systematic change and everybody has been not everyone but most people have been on board um on the you know both of the political aisles and um 
I, I definitely take, think that we have made steps for those changes to happen. For example, Lewiston passed a resolve. Thank you, Elizabeth, for reminding me. I completely forgot about that. But that, you know, that's that's one example of the many things the city of Lewiston is doing in communities across the nation are uh, implementing several changes. But in terms of relationships, I think people now know where I stand. I'm a very passionate person when it comes to issues of um, you know, of systematic oppression and racism, especially being the only black person, I'm like 10 times more energized to really like step forward and fight for changes. Um, and my colleagues like now recognize that in the general community, you know, see that and they are open minded and I'm willing to work with me. And, and that's only that I ask, right? Just open dialogue and open conversation and debate. And that is what is happening. Um, both in the community level as well as the, on the um, the council level. Uh, thank you, uh, Council Woman Khalid. Uh, so in uh, in Portland, uh, with me, uh, it is uh, almost the same with everyone, and we also know that uh, politics sometimes uh, uh, creates adversary. Uh, what I personally uh, say is that uh, my political adversary are not my enemies. They are my uh, thinking and, and they are my partners uh, with different set of uh, 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 philosophical way of looking at an issue. And uh, uh, the current situation is not any different. Uh, my colleagues have been very uh, welcoming. Of course, uh, uh, the current makeup of Portland uh, City Council is the most diverse in the history of the city. Uh, we have uh, uh, me being a black African Muslim. We have an African American woman. We have a biracial man. We have a Korean American. We have a uh, uh, how many women? About uh, let me see, one, two, three, four women and five men. So we are extremely diverse, and and with that comes with um, um, different ways of looking at things. Uh, when this thing started, immediately we issue a proclamation uh, condemning racism. Uh, which, which we've done over and over almost every time that happened. And now we are in the middle of looking at how can we change, not just um, our um, uh, the police, uh, but the whole city. Uh, uh, we are, uh, we're going to discuss that on Monday. And it's been very cordial. People calling each other and say, hey, you brought something forward. How can we be supportive? Or do you need something from us? So yeah, working relationship. Actually, I think uh, uh, um, people who are from out of state, have been more uh, uh, adversarial by emails that is sent to us, angry that we did this or we did that, than between myself and my colleagues. So it's been nothing but a very respectable uh, uh, working relationship. That's great. Thank you, Richard, for that question. Does anybody else have a question? We're getting close to the end of our meeting, but I think we have time for another question if somebody has one that they want to share. If not, um, I'll ask a final question to everybody. I know that um, Sophia and Angela, you're relatively new on the city council and you have some time still ahead of you. Uh, what are you looking forward to um, over the next year um, in, in accomplishing um, the city council or in your communities? Is there something that you're working towards? <sighs> it's a lot of things like i cannot even begin to list them but like i said uh, my dad would say in we have this adage in nigeria kind of giving respect um to who respect is due um several issues i wouldn't want to talk about now but they are definitely going on underground until it's time to come up but definitely, uh, in summary, I would love my city to be more welcoming of people from anywhere. And, and not just to say, oh, yeah, you're welcome, you know, but to actually put in the work that is needed to make sure that people truly feel welcome. Um, because this is very, very important to the economic survival of our community. So that is the summary of what I would want um, to be um, for our community to be more just and to hear everybody, not just people from away, but people that are here too, that are screaming for help, to hear their voices and to be able to um, 
offer them a hand of help as much as we could. So that is all I can say for now. Thank you. Thank you. Prius, Sophia, anything you're looking forward to? Let me help you, Sophia. I don't know why that's happening to you. I apologize. Thank you. Um, you, you know, when I ran for office, one of the big um, issues I ran was, um, you know, I want to build a vibrant community for all members of our of our city. And, and that's what I, you know, continue um, want to do, like build relationships across the board um, from different community members to different departments, et cetera. And that's, and I think we still desperately need that communication and understanding and relationship building. And that is one of, one of the, you know, big things I continue want to um, build, but right now with COVID, I, I hope it ends soon. Um, you know, that's all I'm praying. <laughs> I think uh, for now, um, uh, for the next year, I am looking to see the work that we are going to put in place to uh, examine every part of our system uh, and do um, 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 equ racial equity assessment and see what needs to be changed uh, from how we hire, who, who we hire, how does our police department work, uh, and many other things in our city. So I'm looking forward to that. One of the core uh, 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 values of, uh, 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 one of my core values in terms of public service is uh, civic engagement. And I think uh, this situation have given us an opportunity to expand that in Portland uh, for those of us who are elected or uh, appointed to lead the city to actually engage the people that we represent because uh, our democracy uh, uh, works and um, is effectively if there is an engagement between those who are elected and those that we represent. So uh, that is what I'm looking for uh, for the next year. That's so wonderful. That's Thank you so much, all three of you, for coming. I'm going to echo Rosie and Michelle who typed in, um, thank you, Sophia, Angela, and Pius. We're so happy you're here, and Maine is very fortunate to have you. And um, she's right, Maine is very fortunate to have you um, and to have you volunteer your time to um, support your community. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time to come speak with us. It means a lot. Um, and thank you to Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare for helping to sponsor these events. Um, all of you that participated, thank you as well. Um, I'll be sending a follow-up email asking for some input. And um, again, I hope all of you have a great night. And to Sophia, Angela, and Pius, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It was nice having you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.